Another day, another kiss, man. The great and powerful Joe Rogan. That's his thing. That's the great and powerful Joe Rogan came under attack last week, man. I didn't have time to talk about it, but I'm about to talk about it right now. I'm going to read this article from Forbes, and we're going to just talk about how the world just, how society, we can just see things that we want to see and just latch on to things that aren't there and just turn people into these monsters that they're just not. Or at least I don't see them as these monsters. So we're going to get into it. So, if you didn't know, Joe Rogan did the worst thing he could do, and that is to endorse Bernie Sanders, that he's going to vote for him during the primaries of, you know, the Democratic Californian primaries. And Bernie made the mistake, according to everybody, of making a video about Joe Rogan wanting to endorse him to be the next president of the United States. So this is a clip, right? This is this watch this Bernie's campaign created this. They put it out of Joe Rogan. Um, hyping him up, you know. Oh, he's great, Bernie's whatever. So let's just watch real quick. Who are you gonna vote for in the primary? I think, I think I'll probably vote for Bernie. Him as a human being. When I was hanging out with him, and yeah. I, I, I believe in him. I like him. I like him a lot. What Bernie stands for is a guy who. Well, look, you could you could dig up dirt on every single human being that's ever existed if you catch them in their worst moment and you magnify those moments and you cut out everything else and you only display display those worst moments. That said, you can't find very many with Bernie. He's been insanely consistent his entire life. He's basically been saying the same thing, been for the same thing his whole life. And that in and of itself is a very powerful structure to operate from. So, hey, Bernie, he fucking went. So if you were to be a presidential candidate and you were to get an endorsement from the biggest media entity, I mean, I'm, of course, Fox News, and those are, those are huge, but... When you think about a single person in a single movement, in a single whatever, I don't care if you're talking Howard Stern, I don't care if you're talking Rush Limbaugh, in the internet age, Joe Rogan is the biggest voice out there. It doesn't matter. A lot of shows you see who do interviews, they interview people you don't know shit about, might get 30,000 views, might get 40,000. Of course, they get something like Beyonce, they get millions. It don't really matter. I mean, of course, Joe Rogan's views fluctuate. He got a guy like Alex Jones get 16 million. But Joe Rogan can just interview a random, well-renowned scientist in aquatics, whatever, in aquatics. And that video will still pull in 1.3 million views, 1.2. Like, it could be just the, not a celebrity, not somebody super famous, just a scientist of anthropology, whatever it is. And that should have pulled in 1.3 million views because people love to see Joe Rogan, and they love to see him talk with interesting and different people. And for some reason in the world we live in today, speaking to other people who have different opinions from you, speaking to people who don't agree with you, is a reflection on you. So the backlash comes, of course. Oh, look, he has these guys on the show. He had Milo Yiannopoulos on the show. If you don't know who Milo is, he's a gay, I guess, conservative guy. He does say some wild, off-the-wall things that I don't agree with any of the shit he says, but that's his opinion, that's him. I would interview him just because as a person, I'm curious. I want to know why other people think the way they do. Whenever I saw the, a Muslim chick on Netflix do a, do a whole documentary where she was around, quote unquote, white supremacist people. Do I look at her like she's a white supremacist now because she gave them a platform? No, she's a Muslim woman who's curious to why these people do not like her. She's curious to why these people hate her. Joe Rogan, he brings people on he wants to have a conversation with. There's a lot of times in these interviews where he debates with the person across from on the topics that he doesn't agree with them with. He's not on there saying, just bring all your opinions and just throw them in here and I'm just going to soak them all up. No, he'll debate. A, a popular debate is him and uh, Stephen Crowder on marijuana. Him and Candace Owens on marijuana. Him and Ben Shapiro on something. I forgot what they were debating on. Just, he's, these are the people who they're mad that he bring on. Steven Crowder, Ben Shapiro, Milo Yiannopoulos. Like, I wouldn't compare Milo Yiannopoulos to a Ben Shapiro. Yeah, Ben Shapiro says some things about trans people that might not look good for trans people, but that's what he believes. He's not saying you shouldn't have the right to live here. He's just saying all these things, but I can understand how they could see it as he's against us. He want, doesn't want us here. I can see that, but everybody gets worked up in a tizzy. So let me just read some of this article for you guys. So Sanders' acceptance of Rogan's support in the form of this video didn't just generate a backlash. The reaction seen on Twitter was more like front, side, top, bottom, and every other which way lash. To call it a backlash would be uh, would be akin to describe the movie Joker as an intimate drama about a desperate mother and her troubled son. So, 
Hmm, man, this, I want to read some of these. I want to read some of these tweets because the way we can just characterize people nowadays without any proof, or even if even if the thing that they believe is proof to be, this is outright crazy, is outright ridiculous. So this person, like I said, these people who are verified, we don't know what the fuck they do. They're journalists of this place and this place, and they're all sitting on their high horse and they think they're better than everybody. These are the people that regular everyday people hate. I can honestly say, I know this sounds like a talking point from the right. This is why people hate like Democrat shit because every little thing is a sensitive topic. Everybody in the world isn't sensitive. Everybody in the world doesn't hate everybody, but you can't make a joke or you can't have an opinion about something. If you have an opinion against somebody, you're a hater. You're phobia. You're this. You're that. No, I just have an opinion on it. I don't agree with it. I don't hate you. I don't believe that you shouldn't have the right to live. But they take these things and they turn them into, you hate me. You don't want me to live. You, you, want, you want to get rid of me. So, as Sanders put out the thing, she quoted somebody named Greg Craig who says... This is a pathetic response, and I am done. It is clear the Bernie Sanders campaign does not care about holding transphobia accountable. Among the many other awful things Joe Rogan has perpetuated on his program, I am a human being and a trans person. I am not another belief. So, I guess one of his things is something. But the main thing from Joe Rogan being transphobic is the the topic where he brought up uh, a man who transitioned to a woman beating up women in MMA, like biological women in MMA. As a, as a human being, that is a rational thing to believe. That there are innate differences in biology and physical performance between men and women. And that's not to say that any man that transitions to a woman could go in MMA and beat the shit out of any woman. Because Joe Rogan on that podcast did say that um, eventually a woman did beat the transgendered um, female. So, I'm not saying any man could be any woman. But let's just say I trained MMA from a, a tender age of 15. And I, I was pretty good. I was beating up some guys. I was getting beat by some guys. I would think with my training, if I transitioned to a woman, I'd be able to take on female competition. Right? And people are, oh, yeah, that's great. That's good. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's let them fight. No. That's, just, that's not transphobic. That's just logical. Why would you even let that happen? I, I, there's a study i seen like where you have to, uh, even with the certain amount of hormones you give guys, like the estrogen you pump into them, they'll still in some way produce some type of testosterone that make them superior physically to women, right? They'll never be just like a full, as far as a woman's physical, whatever the word is I'm looking for. Just won't be there. That's not transphobic. That's just fact. The men power lifters are women, men that turn into women that become power lifters that beat women in their, like natural women in their sport. Is that right for natural born women who are trying to become world champions when somebody who is naturally stronger than them who's trained to be strong, comes into their event and destroys them and break records immediately. That's fair for women. It's not transphobic. That's, that's feminist. I'm here for the women. I'm trying, I'm looking out for them. They're getting torn down by this. I see the thing. Chick, um, high school girl, she wanted to be track star. She wanted to be this. And then two biological men transition to women. That's their thing. That's what they do. I don't have nothing against that. But as far as competition goes in sports, those two, you know, they you know what place they got? First and second. Which internally, you need to be top six to make it to the state. The girl, you know what place she got? I think it was like seventh or eighth, something like that. Not saying if there was two other girls in the race, she would have got six, but there was a chance she would have got that place. You know what happens to her? She gets bumped to eight. She doesn't go to state. She doesn't get that look. Who knows how her life goes? She might not get a scholarship here, there, whatever. It's not right. I don't care what you uh the wrestling thing, even with wrestling, there was a, a transgender uh, female that wrestled against girls and they, they beat them. They're state champ like two years. That is not right. If I had a daughter, I'd be like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I get it. You're transgender. Uh, you do what you want to do. That's great. But when it comes to competing and physical sports and activities, it is not fair to these girls that have, you know what I'm saying, lesser physical abilities to go up against this transgender female who at the time has still has their strength and their aptitude for sports. Now, I don't know why we live in a world where we think that's separate and that's different. That, that doesn't happen. I don't live in La La Fairytale Land. I like to live in reality. I like to live in what's real and what's what's honest. So, that's just, that, there was that. That's transphobic. That, to me, that doesn't mean it's transphobic. I'm not saying you shouldn't be allowed, but I mean, hey, you want to be that great, go, go still go compete in the NBA. You can be the first woman athlete to compete in the NBA. You go do that. You can be the first woman to compete in male MMA. You go do that. But as far as going to beat up girls or going to 
race faster than women are going to um r- pick up stronger weights than natural born women this is not right in my book i just i just don't look at it as right you could look at it however you want i just don't look at it as right so another um another tweet from another twitter user who I, i'm guessing this is like a media company it's just it's just um let's just move on it's it's one thing for joe rogan to endorse a candidate it's another for bernie sanders campaign to produce a video bolstering the endorsement of someone who's known for promoting transphobia homophobia islamophobia racism and misogyny they gave joe rogan the whole enchilada they gave him everything you're transphobic homophobic islamophobic racist you're misogynist the only thing i didn't see them give him was he was fatophobic they gave him every um every what is it called every condiment to the to the worst human being could be. So anybody getting mad at Sanders for touting endorsement of Joe Rogan is an idiot. That's see, this is the, the logical side. They're just it's just idiots. Maybe the idea is to get people to vote for our for good your good policies, which is what Sanders did. He gave Joe he gave Rogan nothing, not an inch for his endorsement. Well, I don't get what that is. So let me sneeze real quick and then I'll finish um finish getting to what I'm talking about. <laughs> all in all, this is another case to me of people. Running out, being sensitive, wanting to condemn people for things that they don't do, they don't say. You know what the very ironic thing about this Joe Rogan situation is? He literally started off this episode with Barry Weiss, who was a reporter, a journalist for Wall Street. I don't know, she's a, she's an author now. She just put out a book. That's why she's on Joe Rogan. He started off by saying this exact thing that people are doing to him. He said, you know, in this world we live in, they want to cancel you for this and things you say and da da da. And she's like, yeah, it's a crazy world we live in, da da da. He literally, if you go to this episode of Barry Weiss, listen to the first 12 minutes of the episode, skip the ads if you want to, you know, the whatever he promotes. The first 12 minutes is him discussing what is literally happening to him right now. They bring up old tweets, and I get it. I even talked about the ape thing on here, him saying, I went to the movies and look like the Planet of the Apes here. I get it. His community trying to be funny. I don't look. Oh my God. He's the most racist, worst person in the world. People make jokes. People do stupid shit. People say stupid shit. That doesn't define them as a human being. They say, oh, look, he brings on Ben Shapiro, Milo, you know, number of list. all these bad people. I've watched Joe Rogan has what? 1400 episodes. 1400 episodes of a podcast is crazy. Even have. And Ben Shapiro has been on there. What? Twice. Milo Yiannopoulos, I think he's been on there. Like, once or twice, Stephen Crowder's been on there twice. Like two, so these people y'all hate. Alex Jones been on there twice, so eight times for people that y'all hate on a fourteen hundred episode pod. You don't talk about the good people that he has on that y'all like. Y'all don't talk about the Killer Mike's being on there, the Bernies being on there, the other presidential candidates being on there. Y'all don't talk about the scientists, the the what's the what's the popular scientist guy's name? I don't even know what his name is. I forgot the fuck his name. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Y'all don't talk about these people, the the good people, the the good hearted people. Y'all don't talk about them people being on the podcast. You only talk about the people that y'all don't agree with, that y'all don't like. So that those eight those eight times, those eight appearances on a fourteen hundred episode podcast lead to Joe Rogan being the worst possible person just because you don't listen to any of the other podcasts or you don't even listen to the full shit. I doubt I, I don't listen to all three hours of Joe Rogan's podcast. I listen to bits and pieces and JRE clips is a great thing if you just want to watch certain clips of the episode. But I don't look at Joe Rogan as oh he's a racist, a misogynistic, transphobic, homophobic, Islamophobic, blah blah blah. I just don't look at it like that. I look at a guy who's trying to cultivate information. He's giving platforms to people who have different ideas than him, who also have similar ideas to him. And he's creating an environment where anybody can come sit down and talk about whatever they want to talk about. He had Roseanne on there twice. People hate Roseanne. That was a big episode for him. That is why he is defeating all other media platforms, all the podcasts, because he is not afraid to bring on new people. He's not afraid to bring on people with different ideas. And as people continue to try to combat that idea of talking to other people you don't agree with, You'll just continue to get left in the back. You'll continue just to be stagnant and stand in a place, and you are void of forward progression in your life. And Joe Rogan's going to continue on. He has already, what, 7 million subscribers on Instagram. Not his Instagram. His YouTube on pace to get 10 million probably by the end of the year. He's doing fine. He's doing good. He don't give a fuck. That's just how it is. I just think this is another case of stupidity in the world that we live in today. And that's all I got. Let me know what you guys see in the comment section down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because we got more videos, uh, conversations, reactions, this, and that, whatever. Whatever I feel like talking about, that's what we're going to talk about. So make sure you stay tuned. And I'll see you guys next time, man. It's your boy D-Friend. Peace. Peace.